Your call. Cool. Yes. Oh no, indeed. Well, before we go any further, I just want to echo some sentiments from Glenn that he made a couple of weeks ago. He was unable to make the funeral of a, a fellow called Jim Bannister, who was a, a Cleveland darts legend and someone that I knew as well. And he was a fabulous advocate for darts in the northeast of England, who played county for Cleveland many, many times, and he's going to be sadly missed. And I know that Glenn misses him so, so much. 58. Well said. But it's business time for these two, and Glenn Durant has not been getting down to business so far in this game, because for a man who has been consistently chucking 59. 100 averages all year, Richard Wire, 154. he's a little bit off the pace here. I have to say, I thought Chris Dobie was fortunate to come through against Willie O'Connor. He had a lower average, he was second best for a lot 64. of the game. 34, Glenn Durant, 134. Yeah, I think it's fair to say that you're right there, Dan. Watching that game, I thought he was on the ropes for most of it. Glenn looking to leave tops and does 94. so. But Dolby can get 90. the halfway point if he can stay straight. Another one of those will be handy. All that for the bigger segment on double five. 85. Glenn, you require 40. One dart miss for a 3 0 lead. If Durant breaks back here, we're effectively on throw. All around the board we go. Double five missed by Doby. Double five missed by Dozer. Chris Uguire, five. Desmond. Madhouse. This is awkward because his flight's in the way. Top left. Yeah, shot on the third leg. Dead center. Four leg to throw first. Create Get the him. angle. We just hit the middle. Well, for someone with a 3-0 lead, he doesn't look too happy about it. Well, again, I mean, he's only averaging high 80s here. And to be 3-0 up on Glenn Durrant oh, with a high 80s average is, is almost unheard of this year, to be honest. Well, we know that Glenn can win from any position. I remember a quarter-final at the Lakeside when he's playing against his good friend Jim Williams. It was the first of five sets. And Jim was... Absolutely smoking it. It was a great game. And Glenn won it 5 4 in the end. From 4 1 down. So he believes very much so that he can win from any position. 3 0 down, no problem. I'll just get myself back in this by winning my first leg on throw and then bolster my chances after that. Well, certainly. I mean, I remember when it looked like Glenn Durant might pick up his very first PDC title in his very first weekend of Pro Tour action. As he now oh, picks up the 25 to mean that he's going to get two darts, or should at least get two darts for the leg. But he was way, way behind against Dave Chisel and mounted a stirring fight back, took it all the way to the last leg decided before losing 8-7. Bounced back the next weekend and won his first title. Now he leaves double 18, a trusty friend. Yeah, he's on the fourth leg, Glenda. That was the double that he hit to get his the first title. To throw first. The 76 checkout, I believe, wasn't it? Oh, you're, you're 2020 double eighteen, Game on, quite man. possibly. Beat Dimitri Vandenberg eight three, back in February to pick up his first PDC title. Took his first steps towards making the world match play. Ninety seven. I actually had a word with Glenn a few months ago, and I said, "Have you made your accountant aware that you're not going to be receiving a hundred grand check in January, the staple payment every winter?" And his reply was, "It might be more." Ninety six. Wow. Well, there's only one person who will be going to Ali Pali this year who has won world titles for the last three years running. 93. Actually, I've just thought about this. It is conceivable if Glenn wins at Ali Pali, he will hold both at the same time. Yeah. And that will have never happened. 32. Barney didn't do it, did he? Yeah, one in 2006. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, history could be made. <laughs> the things that come to you in the middle of a match, eh? Mm. 
Well, well if you say to Glenn at some point in the next six to eight weeks that you could be the first person in history to hold both codes world titles, I think that's enough motivation in itself to do all the hard yards. Right, it, it genuinely looked like he might go Safety. and win the world and match play this first attempt. I've seen off Michael Van Gerwen at the Winter Gardens in an emotional display. Took out James Wade with very little bother. But Michael Smith was just too much for him. He needs that 60 to leave double 18 again. And he gets there, he uses that guy perfectly. It's a big shot for Chris. This will snap the momentum of Glenn. Great dart. Yeah, Follows it with another, and that is an thing. absolute peach Singlet from Dobie. Game on. He averaged 106 and lost 6-4 to Durant just a, a few weeks ago. But here, he is looking to get a bit of revenge and book his place in the final day of a European tour. It has been a decent year for Dobie. 180. Managed to do things for the first time, like qualify for the match play himself. We will see him at the World Grand Prix. How big was that weekend in no, Denmark 95. for him and his career? Absolutely huge, making the final, losing out to Chizzy in Copenhagen. But he also made the final day in Prague. First round exit in Austria. Didn't make it to the following Euro Tour event in Mannheim. Finds himself here, looks uninspired against Willie O'Connor. Three consecutive first round exits on the Pro Tour leading up to this. But... 4-1 up on Dazza. I think the best thing about this year Whoa, from a consistency perspective for Chris has been how many times he's qualified. Yeah, he's been regularly making these three. events. And and usually a second round exit, to be honest, until that run in Copenhagen. For a 10 then. And taking 11. He's under no pressure. But he yeah, gets rid of it anyway. Classy leg from Dazar. Tonight is Chris to throw first. Game on. That's his Saturday night name. Well, uh, Glenn Durrant has won two legs. And 100. they've both been absolutely spectacular. Unfortunately for him, he has been less than spectacular in the other four. I've said in the past about the shininess of the Glenn Durrant shoes. They are particularly glossy this evening. He's taken the mantle of Kevin Painter and the shiniest shoes on tour. Well, I mean... 96. There is, in my eyes, no finer judge of that particular award than Paul Nicholson. 96. Maybe because he's the only person that pays a great deal of attention to it, but certainly pays a lot of attention to it. You all know who's got the shiny shoes on tour? Nicholson's your man. <laughs> No, I you don't certain. get many players these days using pear-shaped flights either. And we, we did have Christoph Chuck earlier mm. using pear-shaped flights, but the majority of guys use this standard shape flight no, that Dover's six. using here because it gives the extra drag and a little bit of extra forgiveness. I've always said, and I think we touched on this yesterday, the guys who use the smaller flights, they're the best dark players in the world for me. Yeah. Well, Dobie actually played another one of the players who used the pear-shaped flight, Willie O'Connor. Um, but you're right, there aren't many. Beaton is one of them. But, I mean, have you tried throwing with the pear-shaped flights? I had the best year of my career with pear-shaped flights. So I was actually told by an expert in ballistics that if I switched from a, a small standard flight to a pear-shaped flight, I would score more 180s, and he was right. The uh, problem was when my form uh, went down the path, I kept with the pear-shaped flights because I thought it would work, and what I should have done was go to a bigger flight. Ah, double 16 for Dobie to go within one. This is outside, and is that a key moment in this match? This is the biggest visit of this match for Glenn. He's got to stay in touch. Pick a double. That double is double 16. And that's yeah, brilliant. It's on the seventh leg, Glenn Durham. Eight leg is Glenn to throw first. Well, Game on. One of the things with Dazza, and look, I... He can score heavy, he hits a lot of 180s, he can take out big combination finishes, he can average big numbers. I mean, he's averaged 116 this year on the tour. I've not seen a higher average. 177! Case in point, 177 from Dozer. But, 
I maintain that his strongest asset is that there are key 100. moments in games, pressure moments where he gets one dart at a double and it has to go. And he is one of the most reliable players in the world to take it out. He has got minerals. He's got experience as well. He's always been a very mature dart player. 99. <laughs> are we going to see the roles reverse where Glenn Durant averages 106 and loses to Chris Doby after Doby did exactly that? With Glenn. I'm going to say that Jimmy Greaves is a funny old game. 18. How can you possibly lose a dark match where your first name's 120? It's possible. Well, that's been the key thing. 39. 3 0 down in this game, of course. He's won three of the last four legs. But Doby is going to give himself a chance here. 140. 81. And again, we find ourselves in a position where there's a crucial exchange coming up. Well, Glenn would love to get a treble 10. Pressure applied. That's good. Richard 81. Question is asked of the Northumbrian. Didn't like that one. Make sure of the 12. Make sure of the 12. 41. Crucial mistake. 56. Don't miss the big numbers, as we call it. He's done this once already. Same height, just and to the right. And it's four each. And like it's Chris to throw first. Game on. Well, a big deep breath, perhaps for the first time in this game since the very start. 95. Glenn Durant can just start feeling a bit more optimistic because you've got the feeling over the last five legs where he's won four of them he has been working and grafting and digging deep and finding a way back into this game just keep on doing what you're doing and you can win this one but 96 it's not been without little scares missed dart in the seventh leg missed a big number in the eighth leg Doby had he taken those two it's game over 135. Well, There's a little bit of bounce in the step from Glenn at the start of this leg when he was coming back from the water table. It says to me that he is ready to hit the front now. Toby has rebounded really well after that missed first start in the last visit. This is getting very tight indeed. Sensible use of the board from 271 because if you get a single 42. 19, you got 25 and. A 60 after that leaves a finish. That's someone who knows the board. It didn't work out for him, but the theory behind it was good. Oh, three times in this leg, twice from Durant to respond after a poor first dart. Another will be handy. 96. Glenn Uruguay, 145. Chris Dobie's throw. You have to see it. It's advantage Durant. He won't take the 145. But he is going to leave himself on a very, very straightforward checkout. 137. Oh, I like that. Chris Didn't even mess three. with the bullseye. Aggressively went to leave double four. Very rarely you see that these days on 65, people using that treble 19. That's a season shot. Glenn Uruguay, Dolby can't take eight. out the 133, so it is advantage Durant. Can he get himself in front for the first time? 3-0 yeah, and 4-1 down. And Glenn, Glenn Durant Glenn has turned first. this game, game on, on its head. And Dobie just ruefully shaking his head. He hasn't had a hatful of opportunities, but he has had little ones. 100. But does it will punish you. Once again, he shows that when there's a big moment in the game, he is able to step up and deliver. He is a winner. 94. And he's set to post the second highest average of the tournament so far right now, averaging more than 106, does it? You may have just come up with a really good walk on song for Glenn because he has been flip flopping between a few songs lately. How about Stand and Deliver by Adam and the Ants? Not a fan? I mean, New Romantic's probably a bit more your era than mine, Nico. Oh, thanks for your help, Dan. <laughs> 57. We can't all have a great walk on song like Ryan Joyce, where it's Ryan time. That's 
Brilliant. Second time you've sung in Yeah, Coventry. I love it. It's great. It's a pity he doesn't really work himself up to it, the Geordie. 96. Well, the Geordie in this match, Chris Dolby, is behind the eight ball. Glenn Durant is looking to put him away and chalk one up for Cleveland. 356. And it looks like Chris Dobie's race is run. He's been better than he was against Willie O'Connor. It was good enough to beat the Magpie, but it's not good enough against Duzzer tonight. Really did look like it might be when he was 4-1 up in this one. But just little fleeting chances. A missed dart for 5-2. A missed big number when he could have made it 5-3. Four hundred and forty. Glenn yeah, minimum Mile there from Chris to get himself into the finishing zone. But Glenn on one of those shot outs that has an out. And Chris on a 3% shot. It's unlikely that he's going to get it. But he has the ability. And he has a little bit of... A bit of a slip from Glenn. He's only scored four there. But he has recovered brilliantly. Richard Aguirre, 154. Wow, two shocking darts, but a great one that might rescue his chances. But Chris Doby could steal it away from him on double top. Oh, oh didn't even get close. I think someone shouted out when he had that. And Doby is livid. And I think Glenn's not happy either. That was naughty. Right, needed a miracle shot there from Chris Doby. He had a crack. But it's yeah, a miraculous yeah. turnaround Glenn. from Glenn Durren. He has averaged pretty much 104 in that one and won it 6-4. His second 6-4 win against Chris Doby in a couple of weeks.